<laughs> so I've made chicken from grapefruits and chicken from pea protein. I've even tasted a mushroom that tastes just like chicken. That was wild how good that was. Now one chicken video that I've done that I haven't really touched since is making chicken from Satan. Now I'm not saying Satan, I'm saying Satan. But Satan is one of the most popular meat replacements in the plant-based cooking world. Essentially when you go to a vegan restaurant and you're getting something meaty, most likely they are using a version of Satan. Now other than that one video, I haven't really touched Satan all that much. It's something that I never really thought could be improved. But after reading a bunch of ingredients labels and doing some testing, I believe I came up with something that is going to make it juicier and retain flavor better. It's gonna give it a better chew and make it more meaty and more chicken-like. So let's make a new Satan chicken. I am so excited. This is gonna be good. So Satan is made from the protein, the pure gluten of wheat. It is made by washing the starches away from a wheat flour ball. When you're done washing it, what's left is a sticky mass of pure gluten. Wheat gluten has been consumed and has documented uses all the way back to the sixth century in China. One of the earliest written references for wheat gluten is from the year 535. It first appeared in the US in the 1800s and it was actually prescribed by doctors to treat people that were diabetic. Now, like I said, after doing a little bit of research of some popular chicken products and some chicken replacements, it seems like a lot of them use vital wheat gluten or seitan as a base. But there are some other ingredients that they use, which I already have in my pantry. And if you did my sausage video, you might have them in your pantry as well. And that is sodium alginate and calcium chloride. Calcium chloride as a food additive is used to stiffen something, to toughen something up. Now the sodium alginate is going to react with the calcium chloride, creating a polysaccharide, a water holding, chewier juice holding substance. So let's get rolling. I am really excited to put this together. So for the whole recipe, we just need one cup of water. So let's drop in most of this water. You could probably save about a quarter of a cup. The amount that you save is not super important. You just need a little bit of water left over for the calcium. So now we're just gonna get the water spinning on a low speed, just the lowest speed that your blender goes. We're gonna add two teaspoons of sage, one teaspoon of sugar, about a half of a tablespoon of onion powder. We're gonna add one teaspoon of sodium alginate. This is gonna immediately thicken up and form an alginate gel. There we go, that's our sodium alginate gel that is nice and blended. The consistency is really nice. Now in our remaining water that we have left here, we're gonna add a one teaspoon of our calcium mixture and we're just gonna whisk that in. So at this point, this is where the stand mixer is gonna come into play and we're gonna start mixing everything together and start the kneading process on this. Now I'm gonna do one cup of the vital wheat gluten. Now you can make your own, but essentially this is just pure gluten. I'm getting it everywhere. I'm gonna mix in pea protein, around a half a cup of it. Now you could do a soy protein, or you could just do more vital wheat gluten. Stir this together really quick before we start adding in our other ingredients. So for our next step, we're gonna add in our alginate. What I'm gonna do with the alginate is I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of lightly flavored oil. I'm using canola oil. Now at this point, I'm just gonna drop the sand mixer, turn it on to a stir speed, and then start pouring in the alginate. And then we just wanna make sure that this is completely combined. So I'm just gonna kinda use my spatula. I know you probably shouldn't do this, but. And now let's pour in the calcium. Now I'm just gonna let this knead together on the stir feature here for just a few minutes. Then we're gonna let it rest, but let's let it all get incorporated pretty well before we let it rest. This has really started taking on a new, a new life. This is such a difference already, how firm this is and how, ugh, I mean this is wildly different than what you would normally get. How great, okay, I'm really excited about this. Okay, so we're just gonna let this rest for just a few minutes, let all of that gluten kinda just relax, and then what we're gonna do is then knead this thing like crazy for about 20 minutes. Okay, this thing has been kneading like crazy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this guy up and get ready to cook it. So 
So I'm just gonna quickly roll this in some parchment paper, and I'm gonna roll it pretty tight, and then we're gonna roll it in aluminum foil. Now, just like other seitan, this is wrapped up because this will expand a little bit while it's cooked. We're gonna get this water steaming. This should only take a few minutes on the induction top. And then we're gonna steam this for two hours, at least two hours. So I'm telling you right now, the sodium alginate and calcium chloride is gonna change the texture and the mouth feel of this. It's really gonna change the seitan game. I am excited to see how this comes out. It's gonna be good. Okay, so this is all done. Let's go ahead and unwrap this little burrito of goodness. Now this seitan, this chicken that we've made is just the base chicken. There's not gonna be a whole lot of seasonings or flavor. There's no salt to it, no pepper to it. You can grill it, you can fry it, you can bread it, you can turn it, pull it apart and turn it into, you know, chicken salad pieces. You can sauce it and season it however you want. This is just the base. This would probably make some pretty good deli slices too. Now I'm just gonna slice off like a deli slice slice and see how it tastes. I mean, the texture just looks awesome. I think this is gonna be pretty great. I'm pretty happy about that. So I probably used just a pinch too much sage in my recipe. So I'm gonna bring back just a bit of the moisture. It dried out after steaming for a few hours. I'm just gonna use some vegetable broth. I'm just gonna put it in a nice container here and I tore all of the seitan up into bits. Now at this point you can use this in sort of like a stir fry. You could use it in like a chicken salad. I'm gonna just gonna quickly stir fry these up with a real, with a sauce. He's really sucked up that broth. So really what I'm gonna do is I got a hot pan and I'm just gonna make my own little concoction here. Almost like a general so, I don't know. Like a fake, like a fake general so. And all I'm gonna do is just drop on some soy sauce on these guys. Decent amount of it. Some rice vinegar, again, a decent amount of it. And some sugar. And we'll just let that simmer together for a minute and it's gonna combine up and make a really good sauce. This is gonna be awesome. I mean, I can't wait for this. I mean, look at that. Ah, I mean, I just can't. This is a seitan that has been upgraded with a chewier consistency that's going to resemble meat a heck of a lot more. <laughs> oh. That's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. There it is. Now, I mean, I do recommend, I only put it in the broth for just a few minutes. I recommend letting it sit in there for a little bit longer to let a lot, a lot of those juices soak up. Mm. So gang, all the names that you see scrolling over here on the side, these guys are the members of the Sauce Squad. You can join the Sauce Squad over at patreon.com slash sauce stash. It's only like a buck a month to get your name on the list. All these people are awesome. Thank you all so much for joining. So if you haven't yet, make sure you click the subscribe button and click this video right here. This is gonna be another one of my chicken videos. I'm gonna eat the rest of this.